It is finally 2024, happy new year. And if you're going into the new year with the same organization techniques that left your home in disarray in 2023, you are doing something wrong. Don't do that to yourself. My name is KB, welcome to the channel, and I am a secret messy person. The secret is finally out. And I had to come up with tons of systems that are super easy to maintain, very low maintenance, and very affordable so that I could get my home looking pristine 24 seven. Now I'm going to spill all of those secrets in today's video. So before we jump into it, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button, but let's get into it. We're going to start with holiday decor because the holiday season just ended and you are probably inclined to take your holiday decor and just throw it in the closet. I know that I am, but what I have found over the years is that when we take our holiday decor and just shove it in a closet or a big plastic box or a storage unit, we don't have a good idea of what we have and therefore the next year we end up rebuying, which is a waste of money, a waste of time and something we just definitely don't want to do. I have picked up these ornament organizers. I have a few of them and this one holds up to 64 items and it is adjustable to fit your needs. But I was actually able to fit all of my Christmas decor in this box. Then I just labeled it really nicely so that I know what is in it and I even put a smart label on it which I will talk to you about a little bit later. I even store non-ornaments in here as well so that all of my Christmas decor doesn't get lost and result in me rebuying products the next year. Now when it comes to Christmas trees the best thing you can do is actually make sure to defluff it before putting it away. A lot of times people just shove the tree um, in the bag and kind of call it a day but if you defluff it it will fit much better in that bag and then you can fit additional decor in there so that you're not buying storage container after storage container this will also help to minimize the amount of space that that Christmas tree takes up in your storage space um, I use these storage bags but most trees come with them but just make sure to do some defluffing and for cleaning up the snow of course you can use a vacuum but I found using my dusting slippers to kind of corral all of the snow is way easier than running your vacuum absolutely everywhere because I find that the vacuum pushes the snow and the dust and it isn't as efficient as it really could be. Seasonal blankets, pillows, tree skirts, and other soft things, I tend to vacuum seal them. So Aldi actually has the best vacuum seal bags, but they don't have them all the time. So I also really like these ones from Amazon. I store them under beds and under sofas and in my storage units. I like these ones and I use my standard vacuum with them. All you have to do is suck the air out of it using your vacuum so I have a standard vacuum and I also have a mini vacuum and the reason why I have a mini vacuum for this is I take the vacuum seal bags that I don't use for my Christmas decor and use them for travel it doesn't help with weight but it does help with condensing the amount of space things take up in your luggage which can be super duper helpful keep track of these items I use the smart labels and if you don't know what smart labels are they are actually labels that have QR codes all you do is scan the QR code and thanks to the QR code you're able to describe what's in the bag, take a picture of the bag, detail where the bag is located in your home or in your storage unit so that you don't have to rip apart your vacuum sealed bags, your other containers, and your home to find something in one of those bins or boxes. I find that this happens all the time. We do a deep organization and then we don't actually remember where we put things. So to find one item, we undo all that hard work that we've done. And as a result, our organization methods don't end up working. Let's start in the bedroom because I find that the bedroom is a place where we have a lot, a lot of unused space and many unused organization hacks. I also say super organized in the bedroom by having a heavy duty hamper. Laundry is way too much of a pain and everyone has that chair of doom where clothes pile up. This leads to a lot of visual clutter in the bedroom. Instead, grab something on wheels so that it's easier to hide in your closet and it makes the task of doing laundry much easier. If you can roll it there, you're much more inclined to get it done. I always find that sheets and duvets take up the most amount of storage space and even with a linen closet it can very easily overflow and it makes it really difficult to efficiently and effectively change your bed linens. This prompted me to start using sheet band organizers. They organize the sheets into different sizes so that you know what is full, what is queen, what is king without having to find the label on every single duvet and sheet when it's time to do your bedding. Also it helps to compact the sheets so that they take up less space which is great for maximizing space if you have limited space in your bed. 
bedroom. I find that the space that is least efficiently used and in the most disarray in the bedroom is actually the nightstand. So first I want you to consider adding valet trays to your nightstand so that they don't become catch-alls. If you don't know what a valet tray is, it is just a tray with different compartments. This one that I have has a charging pad for my phone and then it also has three other sections. So I can put my jewelry there, I can put Tums there, I can put decor there and I actually layer my decor on top of this valet tray. One, so that it's easier to move about and two, I have kind of corralled my decor and practical items to one spot so that my nightstand isn't overrun with stuff. I also want you to start organizing the inside of your nightstand. I think a lot of us just kind of throw stuff in there. That's what I certainly do. But I actually picked up these containers. So I got a set of 25 for the price. And these are actually perfect for my space. I think you'll really love them. Um, they come with these pads that you can put on the bottom to stop them from moving. But this fit my drawer perfectly. So I didn't even need to use them. And what I will say about nightstands is once you actually do an audit of it, once you purge it, you'll find that many things in there are just plain junk and your nightstand is actually really precious storage where you can have overflow from your dressers or from your bathroom because you actually don't need that many things in your nightstand um, for nightstand purposes. So I was able to put my travel items in here. I have my travel vacuum in here. I have um, extra tampons in here, other extra toiletries that I otherwise wouldn't have a place to put. And I probably leave them in the bag that they came in and lose track of them and then end up rebuying those items unnecessarily. I find that when we are organized, like I've done here, we consume less, which is so great for our wallets. The next half is actually to add cable clips to your nightstands and desks. What you do with these cable clips is they're just adhesive and you stick them onto the side of like your dresser, your nightstand, whatever, and it actually keeps your cords where you need them. So instead of trying to reach down and find your cord in the middle of darkness and trip over it, it's actually just really nice and flush with your tables so that it's easy to find um, and you stay nice and organized. That kind of brings me into cord management. When it comes to cord management, I want you to not not only use these clips I just spoke about, but also use cord management boxes. So basically the way these works is you put the surge protectors in the boxes and then you're able to connect all of the cords and hide the extra cord in that box. As you can see, this area is a disaster and this is the one place I haven't actually applied my techniques yet until this video, so I'm super excited. So I decided to use cord management boxes and place them in storage baskets so that your cords aren't everywhere and it still looks chic. So I was able to put all of our video game equipment, TV equipment, all of that in these boxes. And then to make it look even more seamless, I draped a blanket safely on the side so that it looks like a pillow or blanket holder instead. I still maintain a decent amount of space to ensure that I am not causing like a fire hazard or anything like that. There's still ample ventilation, but it blends in a lot more and it doesn't look like this pile of doom and mess that it looked like before. But once you do the cord management, it can be very difficult to kind of keep track of how to turn those items on it can be such a pain because sometimes you have to pull the cord to do it so what i like to do is actually use these smart plugs so you get a set of five and two remotes for the price and you don't have to use an app and that's what i love about these they are super user friendly even if you aren't techy let's plug your lamp or whatever into that smart plug so you can do your cord management once and you don't have to worry about doing it again Another way I actually like to maximize storage in the living room is also to have storage baskets or boxes hidden on the side of the sofa. So there's normally a side of the sofa or some seating um, that is kind of in a corner. And I love to tuck away a basket or a box there. That's where I throw all of my extra throws, pillows, items that I'm not gonna fold all the time. I'm gonna be honest about it but I want access to, and I don't want them cluttering up the rest of the space. So have a catch-all basket that's just very, very well hidden. I also love to have storage baskets and boxes on my coffee table. You need a catch-all on your coffee table because a coffee table is quite like the entryway table. It just attracts stuff. So I use boxes and bowls to store all of my remotes because all of us have tons of remotes with all of our battery-operated products now, and this way I'm able to keep track of them and stop my coffee table from getting super cluttered. Just work those boxes and bowls into your styling. When you're following the rule of three, just choose one item to be a box or bowl and you will be good to go. The best tip I can give for the living room also is to have tons of closed storage. Um, and this works for the entry as well. This is where I've done it because they don't have a ton of living room furniture, but I have bookcases that are closed so that I can hide my mess. Sure, this is as organized as I'm going to get. I'm not going to deeply organize my tech supplies because I know that I cannot maintain 
maintain it. So I have it organized enough and I have it hidden so that I am not faced with that mess 24 seven. Sometimes we have to put systems in place that are more practical than aesthetically pleasing because it's something that we can maintain for years to come. I hope that you're walking away from today's video feeling super invigorated when it comes to organizing your home. It doesn't have to be like the home edit. It doesn't have to be something that is super overwhelming. You can implement the very, very minor tips that I shared in today's video to get a home that works for you 24 seven. I've linked all the items that I use to organize my home down in the description box so you can go pick them up for yourselves. Please let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this video and if you'd like a kitchen and bathroom version because those spaces are also wonderfully organized and I can share my hacks about that too. But thank you so much for watching today's video and until next time, have a beautiful day.